Miss Napoli out there told me that my microphone wasn't on, it was really her camera. Hi everyone and welcome back to the garden. And um, this could very well be the last um, video that we do here at Driscoll Drive because we're moving out, we have to move. And um, so I just thought before we did, we started transplanting everything that um, we do a quick vid and get in this lovely corner around the pond with the watercress and under this Sri Lankan banana of all these little herbs growing here that um, are special, some of them famous, some not so well known, but they're all great in their own right. So let's go, here we have celery growing. Celery is very nutritious, apium uh, graviolans, I think it's called, or gravel, gravelions, something like that, of the Apiaceae family. A lot of people don't know that there are red and white cultivars of celery, and this is obviously the white, the white being the one that's most tender and crisp and full of flavor. So I don't think the red's eaten very much, but this is obviously the white, the common one. And um, there are two main types of varieties of celery, the dulse, and I think it's called the rapacium, the dulse being the one where you eat the petioles or the stems, being celery itself, and the rapacium being the one where you eat the roots, so the celeriac. Um, so they're two main varieties of celery. But celery, high in vitamin C, good source of calcium, and high in silica as well, and apparently it makes a great drink when you juice celery and combine it with lemon juice. So there's one to think about. Excellent source of sodium, so it's very, very organic. Um, yeah, very organic and very alkalizing. Um, it's the main thing. So celery, if you're looking for a multivitamin, you know, celery is a great, a great herb, a great vegetable. We mix ours with oranges, it's great. Uh, over here, we have sorrel. Sorrel is also known as dock. This is French sorrel. The thing about sorrel is it's very high in vitamin C. That's why I love it. It's got a quite a tangy flavor, which is because it's also quite high in oxalic acid. So if you have kidney problems or if you have a reaction to oxalic acid, again, you test your herbs singularly and um, you give them a bit of time to see how they react with you. You eat them raw, obviously. Take, try a little bit, see how they react. If you react to oxalic acid, then don't eat them. Other than that, if you eat intuitively, you shouldn't be eating too much for it to have any type of problem. But I love this in my smoothies and I love it in the salads. Apparently, the Europeans, I think it's Belgium, they slice it up very thinly and they mix it in with their mashed potato. Uh, it tastes great, but I do love the taste. And um, it's a high source of vitamin C, high in oxalic acid, but if you eat it intuitively, you're not going to run into any that type of problem. Um, growing throughout it, we have nasturtium. Now, nasturtium, also known as tropiolium, I think it is, but it's commonly known as nasturtium, is um, it's a great companion plant. It's a sulfurous vegetable, and it's not quite of the Brassicaceae family, but it's it's of the order that Brassicaceae come from. Brassicaceae being your cabbage and mustard family, but it's a great companion plant for them because it it attracts predatory insects that protect them as well as distract those um, um, insects that prey on those types, you know, attract them to the flower or to the plant it, itself. Um, another one it protects, it's a great companion for the Curcuta the Q Curbitaceae family. All these big words. They're the cucumbers, the gourds, the pumpkins, the um, melons squashes, those types of vegetables, the nasturtium is a great companion plant for because it attracts those predatory insects which protect them. Um, it's a sulfurous vegetable, it's very pungent, you can eat the flowers, throw it in your salad, as I said, it's very pungent, I don't eat a lot of it, but it's great to grow around things. Uh, also here we have borage, it's amazing borage, I mean bees love it, it brings bees into the garden by the loads, and that's obviously going to help pollinate your other fruits and vegetables. Um, borage is awesome, Borrego officinalis, and it's awesome because not only is it a potassium fixer, so good for your liquid manures, but um, its leaves are a great source of zinc, and its flowers are a great source of GLA, gamma-linolenic gamma acid, which is an anti-inflammatory, even though it's an omega-6, and most omega-6s are inflammatory, or pro-inflammatory, uh, GLA is actually anti-inflammatory, although your body will make it from other sources of um, omega-6. But it's, it's the highest known vegetable source of omega-6 within the seeds, and that's why the seeds are harvested to create borage oil. 
Um, you know, the leaves have trace amounts of pyrrolizidine alkaloids. If you have any type of liver disease or susceptibility to it, then you might want to forego it. But you need to eat a wheelbarrow full of borrowed leaves to have any type of toxicity. But just bear that in mind. The flowers don't have any toxic pyrrolizidine alkaloids at all. Over here behind the borage, we have an amazing herb, it's Angelica, and I haven't done a video on Angelica yet, but I will one day. But it's one of those magical herbs that is contains germanium. And if you're watching my videos, you'll know what germanium is. It's an oxygen catalyst, it's, it's an antioxidant in its own right, and it's great for healing the DNA because it's found the end of the DNA chain. And um, yeah, so an amazing herb, Angelica. And last but not least, we have valerian, valerian which is a bit of a sedative within the leaves and also the root itself but it also fixes phosphorus, it's another one great for the, um, for the liquid manure and it's all here underneath the Sri Lankan banana. This garden started off as a bit of a grand experiment really and um, I've always wanted to grow herbs and I didn't really know what would happen and you know from what started as a little patch in the corner of the yard, it slowly took over the whole backyard, and uh, it's been an amazing journey, an amazing experience. And um, one of the more profound and transformative things I've done in my life, because it's really brought me into contact with nature and the and and the laws with which you know the cycle of life and the circle of life um, grows and operates, and. Uh, Yeah, it's something I wouldn't change for the world, and um, it's really unfortunate, and it's why I'm quite sad to be leaving the garden because of all the years of work that's gone in here, and it's um, been quite a home with the ducks, which we lost just the other week. Nature took them back. Fox uh, broke in and sly little fox got in and got yeah. them all in one night. Yep. So I'd like to dedicate this video to the girls who are past now but are buried here in the garden, they're a part of the garden, to Jimmy James and Padma Bala, to Crank, to Lemon and to Crispy. And um, I'm very grateful for them and for this experience being here in the garden to be able to do all this and to have this space and access to the resources that have just come literally out of nowhere to build this garden. Um, to the universe that has provided that and to Mother Nature that has provided this experience. That's why I'm quite moved to share this information with as many people as possible. And uh, well, I'll be looking forward to getting into other gardens and creating some of the magic that has been created here. From the bottom of my heart, I'd just like to thank you all for tuning into these videos and, and watching. And I hope to bring you some more great stuff soon. Bye for now.